All right, so here is our crotch repair, making a strong crotch. So previous videos discussed the types of glues to use. It's not a glue, it's a plastic solvent. ABS or styrene solvent, solvent to fuse the plastic, not a glue. I don't want to rely on a contact uh, bond. So the first thing is to grab a piece of plastic from another broken figure or an ABS or styrene, something plasticky of the same composition. It's vital that when we fuse the parts together, they have to be as close as possible of the same recipe, the same plastic composition. So this came from a, um, another figure that had a green plastic that matches. So here's how, how we're gonna make strong uh, crotches. We're gonna put an insert. We could put just a white styrene or plastic and then paint it, but I don't like painting. I like to match the plastics from the get-go. And the plan is we're gonna put the rib here so that it's gonna be a stronger crotch. All right, so now, oh, this crotch is strong. I thought it would break, but I guess it doesn't. So, oh, see it whiten. So this is a sign of a good plastic. A good plastic whitens, then breaks. A plastic which has lost its plasticity shatters without any whitening. So this plastic actually is pretty good. So, yeah, so much for my video here. I was expecting to break it, but it looks like this plastic is good. Compare that with others. So what I can do here is I'm gonna go rough. This is cruel, but I'm gonna show it just for the sake of the video to show you that I'm walking the walk and not just talking. There you go. Now notice that this plastic is still good. Tiger Force Lifeline, built in 88. Uh, green plastic, not too dark, still very, very good. So here we have a broken crotch. Most of the time it happens from a fall and it is uh, with a very clean cut. Here I might have some dis distortion because of uh, I was uh, bending it with the pliers. And the whitening part is gonna be tricky to remove. The whitening, you know, the plastic resorts back to its true nature because ABS by nature has got this off-white color. And the color we see is the pigment has been added. And the pigment for some reason is uh, disappearing upon the, uh, the stress. That's something I don't know why it happens, but it's, it's, it's typical. We can remove the white marks on most plastic with heat or uh, <coughs> sanding, polishing, or using brushing with a light solvent coat. So here we are. So we got the nasty mark there. So again, look, it can, it can be seamless. Yeah. And now I'm gonna go in the back side and place the uh, reinforcement rib, if I can find it. Mm -hmm. There you go. So I grab my... So this is delicate and I'm doing this live with no editing, so it might work, it might not work. So solvent is very slow setting. If you put too much, it melts too much and it it lengthens the curing time. So if you put too much solvent, there's nothing you can do. You have to wait, wait, wait until the uh, thing dries and then you can work. So if you want to send it, for example, the big mistake is if you put too much, there's no alternative. You gotta have to wait for it to dry until you can send it. Um, there is no accelerating. I've tried with compressed air, but um, you know, the solvent evaporates and uh, when it evaporates, you're left with just plastic. So then you can sand it, drill it, do whatever you want, reshape it, which is great. This isn't like super glue because if you put too much super glue, if you put a lot, you're actually putting a foreign material, you're putting a filler. You're filling it with acrylic and it's gonna sand differently. So I don't know if you can see here now. So I'm brushing inside and uh, you give it a few seconds, it's gonna melt. And as it melts, it makes the material pliable that you can work with it. So I can squish, squeeze, squish it, squeeze it further. It's a bit like working with glass in some ways. And it's funny because glass has this, and plastics have similar pro pro properties, right? Uh, okay. 
So now I'm going to try something risky here. I'm going to try to brush this to see if I can get rid of the whitening. No, it's not doing it. But it doesn't matter. It's going to be some uh, surgical flame application to whiten that. So obviously this would have been a much better operation if uh, if it was a broken crotch, like a genuine, genuinely broken crotch, not instead of me, you know, tweaking it, because this plastic has nothing wrong. As you know, it took me force. Now, this is another guy. I mean, yeah. Yeah. yeah I could do a live demo, but I'm not sure. Uh, what takes a lot of time for me is to find the part that fits in here, that insert. And you're gonna to have to trim because obviously the uh, metal T-bar is to go down and you don't want any interference. So I might, when this is dry, I'm gonna to have to shave maybe at the top. But this is a technique to build a much stronger crotch. And uh, I recommend, uh, I know this is not collected, I recommend increasing the gap so that the T-bar has a bit of wiggle room in there. Now, some of you guys might not like it, but if you look, not all figures are equal. Some of them are really tight on the legs and it has nothing to do with the O-ring. Some are proper. So I think this is, you know, I think this is normal. You should be able to wiggle the T-bar, the hip side to side like this inside. And on, unfortunately on some figures, it's too tight. And uh, when we move the legs up and down, the T-bar, depending on the curvature of the leg, might be moving up and down. So the T-bar should be able to move up and down without rubbing on the crotch. And this is what I see on a lot of figures is that the uh, these surfaces here are wrong. So it's interesting. This one is only the front, not the back. But then often I see it's like they're squeezing the T-bar and the T-bar is is, 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 is is not free. So it's like, you just give it a bit of room by sending. Uh, and if you notice I'm holding the file at an angle, I want to send the... Uh, the inside, I don't want to send the edge because sometimes you still see it when the figure's upside down. Okay. So this uh, repair is gonna take me, you know, if I'm in a rush, I might wait a few hours. Uh, but if you're really patient, just give it some time. Give it some time. On the knees, for example, because it's so critical in such a small area, I really leave it a day or two. It really pays off. If it breaks again, work again. But really the trick with solvent is to be patient. It will evaporate. The plastic is gonna fuse and be one again. Work on it later, don't rush it. And uh, yeah, I hope this helps you guys. The video did not, uh, I wish it would have broken much cleaner, but it didn't happen. <laughs> so uh, I'll maybe attempt another uh, live. Maybe this one would be a good example. This one be maybe I'll try another one.